Hi everyone, I, Dr. Varun Rai from Gangaram Hospital, New Delhi, will be showing and demonstrating a case of deep parotid stone. This patient came to us with recurrent episodes of left side parotitis, and we proceed with a cylindroscopic approach. The first step and crucial step to any cylindroscopy procedure is to achromatically dilate the papilla or the opening of the parotid duct. We use a sequentially larger diameter of dilators to accommodate entry of at least a 1.3 millimeter scope. After which an endoscopy is done to visualize the entire ductal tree as we can see right here. Various branches were explored during this procedure and we really found the stone really really quite deep within the gland. This was at the level of the tertiary and quaternary branches of the duct. Owing to the narrow diameter of the duct, we knew that simple extraction was going to be difficult. However, we did try to basket the stone and try to extract this completely in one piece. However, God was not so kind and the basket did end up getting stuck at one of the branching segments which impeded direct removal. So the options basically after this are an open approach to do a parotid duct combined approach or to fragment the stone into smaller pieces. Since we did have a clear line of sight to the stone with a relatively wide duct aperture, a decision for laser fragmentation was taken. We use the laser settings at quite low frequency and energy settings to minimize the surrounding duct damage. Care must be taken to really keep the stone in the center and to see where the laser is being fired. The laser can have deleterious effects onto the duct, so we make sure that the fiber never comes into contact with the duct walls, which may cause inflammation and stenosis at a later stage. As the fragmentation continues, we can see that we are moving in a center to periphery pattern to minimize ductal trauma. This is almost an unedited fragmentation sequence where you can actually see we are proceeding from the center of the stone towards the periphery and progressively breaking down the stone into multiple smaller fragments. Care must be taken to ensure that the fragments are below the required diameter for it to pass through the duct without at a later stage. So we see as the fragmentation goes on, always taking care to stay away from the duct walls. The fragmentation then proceeds to make sure that all the fragments are below at least two millimeters or the surrounding duct diameter to facilitate removal with a basket or forceps. We see a slight aiming beam also at the center which guides the laser. However, tactile feel is a more reliable indicator that you are really not injuring the duct mucosa and just being directly onto the stone. The laser being used in this case is the luminous holmium laser As the fragmentation proceeds, we can see that a lot of stone debris with small particles are there. Once the fragmentation is complete, then comes the job of taking care of all the debris that is created after the fragmentation procedure. And here you can see that the basketing is being done of the individual fragments to make sure that at the end of the procedure, the duct is free of all stone fragments. The basketing procedure is then proceeded to completely remove all the large fragments of the stone within the duct. A couple of fragments do come out during flushing which is then subsequently extracted.
at the end of the procedure, you need to really see that there are no large fragments left behind and the duct is nice and healthy. And this ensures a good post-op salivary flow and a complete recovery for the patient. The very small fragments just flow right out with the irrigation procedure and the duct is stented to complete the procedure. Thank you so much for your attention and please feel free to contact us for any more queries. Thank you and have a great day.